As Lebanon marks the one-year anniversary of the devastating blast, families of victims still wait in vain for justice. On the 4th of August 2020, one of the world's biggest ever non-nuclear explosions destroyed much of Beirut's port and devastated swathes of the capital. The blast was caused by a fire in a warehouse, which Lebanese authorities admit held a vast stockpile of ammonium nitrate for six years. Years. The huge explosion left more than 200 people dead and more than 6,500 injured. Some 300,000 homes were damaged or destroyed. The tragedy hit Lebanon as the country was mired in its worst economic crisis for decades. The Lebanese currency was on a free fall and the country also saw massive layoffs and drastic banking uh, restrictions. A year later, critics say that the political leadership has succeeded in stonewalling the judicial investigation that was launched to uncover what happened in the explosion and who was responsible. But President uh, Michel Aoun says that no one will have political cover if they are found negligent or guilty. But he has not addressed accusations that officials are obstructing the investigation. A year on, how are Lebanese people marking the uh, fatal the day that fatal blast caused the deaths of more than 200 people? This, uh, when a stock of 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate dumped in a port exploded. To tell us a little bit more, we're now joined uh, from uh, Lebanon by Dr. Zainab Al Safar, who's a Iraqi Lebanese broadcaster and producer with uh, Al Mayadeen TV in Beirut. Thanks so much indeed for joining us uh, and welcome to the program. Good to talk to you again. Good evening, Peter. Thank you for having me. So we spoke a year ago uh, in the aftermath of these blasts and it was a shock and uh, there was cries for somebody must be found responsible. It seems a year later we're no clearer about who should be held to account. Why is that the case, Zeno? Um, first of all, Peter, allow me on mm. the first anniversary of this colossal uh, national tragic catastrophe of the explosion of the port of Beirut on the 4th of August 2020 that affected Lebanon and the Lebanese as a whole and uh, appalled the entire planet by its immensity to extend our deepest sincere condolences to the families of the martyrs and to all the wounded and crippled and disabled and hoping for the full recovery. Yes, with great pain, we remember today the suffering of the Lebanese in those difficult times and the dark cloud that crossed the sky of our country and left its ominous effects and damages on all levels. Today, as you said uh, in the intro, a big uh, congregation of demonstrators gathered in a rally in uh, Martyr Square in the heart of Beirut, moving all the way to the port of Beirut. And uh, of course, there were speeches and prayers and a vigil. This is on the one hand. Um, on the other hand, some protesters gathered in groups um, there was a plan to demonstrate in front of the various ministries and the headquarters of the prime minister of the caretaking government, Hassan Diab, and the minister of interior, among other ministers, of course, whom they claim to be responsible for the catastrophe. Uh, also, uh, in, for, in front of the headquarters of uh, perhaps the leader of the army and his predecessor. Um, others, as they Planned. It was pre-orchestrated and planned uh, to barge into the parliament uh, headquarters building, um, which all uh, descended to a, a moment of wreaking havoc and then turned into clashes with the security forces. Um, and the latter, of course, they used tear gas to disperse the riots. Also, um, uh, today, earlier, some problems broke out among some demonstrators who belong to uh, vying political parties, so to say, at the rally. The communists on the one hand and supporters of the Lebanese Forces Party on the other hand. Uh, 
also to mention that uh, at least two people were apprehended by the security forces earlier today who possessed some firearms and hand grenades and masks and metal chains who were attempting to use these uh, ostensibly in wreaking havoc. Uh, mm. that, that said, Peter, it is necessary that after a year, the Lebanese people stand in solidarity and cohesion to overcome this painful ordeal and to work hard to reach the full and undiminished truth with all transparency and honesty away from the cheap political exploitation and settling political accounts and narrow internal conflicts that conceal many malicious goals, the most important of which is the disappearance the concealment of the truth and the squandering of responsibilities, thus preventing accountability and prosecuting the culprits and perpetrators of this heinous crime. Up to today, Peter, the concerned judicial authorities, um, we didn't have any kind of solid outcome of all the investigations that were run across Lebanon. And all the calls that uh, called for the internationalization of this uh, massive colossal action. Well, it is already internationalized because you have many security apparatuses from around the globe. They came into Lebanon, they participated, even the FBI participated in the investigation, but still no outcome was divulged. So the concerned judicial authorities, they ought to deal with this major national issue with the care it deserves with the seriousness and responsibility away from attrition, pressures and interest, and to reveal the facts with full transparency before the Lebanese public opinion and to the world, and thus put a final unequivocal end to internal manipulation and external exploitation and tossing accusations and distorting the facts at the expense of truth, justice and the pain and suffering of the Lebanese. I remember that uh, a lot of money was pledged to um, uh, Lebanon uh, by international uh, uh, organizations and countries. Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, France, for example, pledged 11 billion. But it was all based on Lebanon reforming. Have the political elites refused to do the reforms that will enable them to get this help? Well, up till today, we don't have a government in Lebanon. We just had some uh, 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 steps at uh, uh, naming a nomination of a prime minister designate. And up till today, you know, they nominated uh, Mr. Sadr Hariri as the prime minister designate. And after nine months, he failed to form a government. And also today, we have another prime minister designate, Mr. Najib Miqati, and still no government is formed. So how can you get any sort of money or funds without having a proper government with a policy statement and a program that can help in, uh, you know, the reform that we all aspire for, especially that Lebanon is in the crosshairs of a very difficult economic financial, monetary, and health situations. How are citizens coping? Because since the blast, as you say, economic hardship has visited uh, most citizens. Uh, prices are going up, hyperinflation. The Lebanese currency has uh, devalued significantly. And uh, the average citizen's life must be much, much harder than ever before. The situation in Lebanon, uh, Peter, um, and of course, maybe you could be miles and miles and thousands of miles away, but you all hear about Lebanon and the beauty of Lebanon. Today in Lebanon, we are suffering from massive uh, catastrophes, and they all boil down to political exploitation, even the economic situation and whatever is happening to the lives of uh, the Lebanese today, you talked about the devaluation of the Lebanese currency. It has never reached that 
bottom mm. today and uh, the people are suffering dearly from this bad economic situation with nothing to be promised uh, with not any prospect of any change to come and uh, over pressures from uh, the outside and the sanctions that are being used and uh, the people who are being targeted by these sanctions and we all know who we are talking about it's all a matter of unilateral coercive measures being used against Lebanon in order to twist the arms of the Lebanese to uh, to walk on, to turn their back to a very big portion of the Lebanese, which uh, is the environment who is supportive of the resistance in Lebanon, of Hezbollah in Lebanon. And who is Hezbollah? Hezbollah is part and parcel of the Lebanese society. Uh, they have representatives in the parliament, in the government. So uh, it's a matter of trying to twist the arm of the Lebanese more to give up on uh, those people who share their land, who have defended their land and who are part and parcel of the society. Zainab, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so, so much indeed uh, for sharing your thoughts and insights on Lebanon on this day as we remember that uh, fateful day a year ago. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you.